And we're back. All right, I have this next experiment set up. This one you're going to follow from start to finish. This is the dissolved oxygen test. All right, dissolved oxygen. The concentration of dissolved oxygen in water is extremely important in nature as well as in man's environment. In oceans, lakes, rivers, and other surface water bodies, dissolved oxygen is essential to the growth and development of aquatic life. Those of you that have fish tanks and you have the little bubblers, why do you have the bubblers? So that you get oxygen into the water. Without oxygen, the water can become toxic due to the anaerobic decaying of organic matter. Also, living things will use that oxygen, and if there's nothing to replace it, they will soon die. In man's environment, water must contain at least two milligrams per liter of oxygen in order to protect water pipes from corrosion, which is counterintuitive because what is corrosion? It's oxidation, but we still have to have a little bit of oxygen in order to protect the pipes. Some fish need as little as two milligrams per liter of oxygen. Others, such as trout, trout needs around six to seven milligrams per liter of oxygen, if I remember the chart correctly. It's somewhere between five and seven. So different fish require different levels of oxygen in the water as well. All right. This one is the one I like the most because this one is the one that does the most. So we have some paper towel here because this one is going to get messy. What you see in front of you is you see a glass jar with a little glass stopper. We have our different chemicals back here that we're going to use. This experiment says remove the stopper. Oh, sorry. Rinse the glass bottle with the water sample, which I've done previously. Fill this to overflowing. So I have to fill this completely up with our water sample. So we fill, 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 fill to the top. Got to save some water for later. When I put the stopper in, it's going to overflow. It just did. Now it says to please add five drops of the manganese sulfate solution and the alkali azide reagent. So here we go. We're going to the manganese sulfate, five drops. Now watch the water. Here's what you need to pay attention to, please. Notice how clear this is. Ooh, yeah, I would go and drink this in a moment. What we're getting ready to do is we're getting ready to precipitate all the solids in here. So we're gonna do five drops, here we go. And one, two, three, four, five. Okay, you can kind of see that flowing through the water if you're looking up close. Then we're gonna do this one right here. One, two, three, four, five. Now watch, it's gonna get interesting really fast. One, two, three, four, five. Oh my gosh, what's going on here? This is not cool. We put the stopper, it says add some more sample to fill it completely. All right, so we're gonna just add a little bit more to fill this back up. There we go. Put the stopper back in. And then we're going to shake the bottle just a little bit to get this all mixed up. And voila, what in the heck happened? All right, this cloudiness in here is called flocculate. Please don't make that into a bad word. It's right here. It's called flocculent. Flocculent, F-L-O-C-C-U-L-E-N-T, flocculent. That's the cloudiness in here. After approximately two and a half minutes, we're going to let the sample stand and let the flocculent precipitate start to settle. If you look through here, this should be starting to settle. So we're going to wait about two minutes, and then we're going to come back and we're going to add 10 drops of sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid is going to cause this cloud to go away so that we can take a sample and determine how much dissolved oxygen is actually in here. And again, oxygen. You've got to have oxygen. And while we're waiting the two minutes, let's just talk about water in anyway. The earth 
is approximately 70% water, covered in water. Our planet, it is a water planet. Coincidentally, when you're born, you're approximately 70% water as well. Which means if you weigh 100 pounds and we put you in an oven and bake you down and get all the water out of you, all that's left is 30 pounds of bone, skin, muscle, tissue, and organs. Human beings have been known to go anywhere from 50 to over 80 days without eating solid food, just drinking water. But no human being has ever gone more than four or five days without drinking water. And most human beings die after three days of not drinking water. So the single most important thing that you need to be doing to ensure your health is to be drinking water. That's our ad for water. Now back to the experiment. So we've waited about two minutes. We're now ready to put in our sulfuric acid. So here we go. We're going to put in 10 drops of sulfuric acid. Let's watch what happens. 10 drops. Here we go. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. As you can see, something is definitely happening in here. After approximately, it says again, stopper the bottle. So we're going to stopper the bottle again. And they want us to invert the bottle a few times like this and oh my gosh something has happened it's magic now we have some particles floating around in here those are some of the solids still reacting with the sulfuric acid but as you can see it is cleared up significantly it is changed into a yellow color yellow is a good color for us on this because we want it to be yellow Stop for the bottle, invert it until all the particulate material is dissolved. The sample is ready for measurement when it is yellow and completely limpid. Limpid means it needs to be clear. Well, we're getting there. It is getting more and more clear as we go along here. We're going to wait a second and see if it'll clear up even a little bit more than what we have. And it is. So I'm watching it. These little brown particles are going away. So we're going to wait another minute or so and let's see what happens. Yellow is a good color and yes, I know what it looks like. Uh, could be beer. No, it can't be beer. We don't want to talk about that in school. None of you do that out there. But it is turning yellow. Alright, we're going to take a 5 milliliter sample of this. So we're going to take 5 milliliters of this into a sample container. And there we go, five milliliters. I got it, five milliliters. And what we're going to do is we're going to add one drop of starch indicator and mix. And this is our starch indicator. Okay, now, nice and yellow. Starch indicator. Boo. That's quite a change. All this is necessary though so that we can determine how much oxygen is in here. Now we're going to take our titration solution. We're going to pull it up into our cup. Now what we're doing here is we want to see this change colors. And we want this to change to, and I'm looking off here, we want this to change from blue, and if this is blue, ladies and gentlemen, it is dark, dark blue. And we're going to change it back to colorless. So, let's count some drops, shall we? We're going to read off the milliliters when we're done. We're starting with one milliliter. Okay, so if one drop is 0.3, here we go. One, two, swirl. Three, 
four, swirl. I know you're going to get tired of me saying that. Five, six, and when this changes, it's going to suddenly change, so keep your eye on it. Seven, eight. It's already clearing up a little bit. Eight, nine, ten. Eleven, 